Hello boys and girls and welcome once again to another week's lesson. My name is Sister Philippa Stewart and I am from Christ Tabernacle Apostolic Church. I am so happy that you have decided to be with us today. Indeed, I know you could be doing so many other things, but welcome to another week's lesson. For those of you who are joining with us for the very first time, we are so happy that you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who have been with us the past few weeks, welcome one and all. We are excited to have you here joining in us for our weekly lessons. And I hope you were able to meditate and reflect on what we spoke about in our last session. Remember our last lesson we were talking about hearing and believing and we met a man called Paul who posed a very important question. I hope you were able to reflect on that. I hope you were able to talk with your families and relatives or even your friends about what we think Paul meant when he told them that their consciences were seared as with a hot iron, right? And so please, sending your comments, your thoughts, let me hear from you so that we can communicate. Now, this week, we will be talking about serving God from our youth. Our lesson is going to be coming to us from Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through to 41. And we're looking at Barnabas being mentoring, a mentor to John Mark. Now we know that God does not look at age the way we do, right? He looks at young or old, and we always have the opportunity to serve him. He doesn't say you're too young to serve me or you're too old to serve me. He wants all of us to serve him, right? Even in our youth, even as young as you are. And those of you who've been with us for several months now, you know we were introduced to a few kings that God used who were even as young as eight years old, right? So God doesn't just look at our age to say that you have to be grown to serve him. He wants us young and old to serve him because our greatest source of teaching comes from a transformed life. When we are trying to become more and more like Christ. So when we are becoming more and more like him, we're going to see that our life is going to be transformed. What do we mean by that? That means some things that we used to do, some bad habits that we had, will start falling away. And so this week, we're going to look at serving God from our youth. Now, I have some questions for you. In our lesson, we are going to be talking about being left out of some activities. Do you or have you ever been left out of an activity because of your age? Hmm. Think about it. I know sometimes I can think of activities when I've been left out of, right? Maybe your older brother or sister gets to stay up late past 10 p.m. on school nights and you think that's not fair because you're younger, you have an earlier bedtime, right? What about the older ones get to sit in the front passenger seat and you don't? Hmm. Sometimes, you know, we don't like that because we don't think it's fair, right? Has your older sibling or friend ever gotten to do something you didn't, right? We were just saying, sometimes they, they get to sit in the front passenger seat, right? Because they're older, taller, and so they get to do some things that we, when we were younger, don't get those privileges. How about, have you ever left out your younger sibling or friend because of his or her age? So sometimes we're, we are the ones who do the right? We're not only the victims, but sometimes we leave out our younger sisters or, or even our friends. We leave them out of activities too, right? 
because of their age were saying, oh, you're too young for this. You can't join me in my video gaming because you don't understand what's going on. Right? So we too sometimes leave others out of the activities that we are doing. And so in our lesson today, that's something that we are going to see. Now, how do you think the person that we left out of the activity, how do you think they would have felt about that? And how did they respond? If you remember, go back into your memory and see if you can think. When you were overlooked, how did it make you feel? What did you do? And when you leave others out, can you remember, a, you know, how did they respond to you? Did they have a tantrum? Did they throw a fit? Hmm. I know, I know. It's not always fear, we think, right? So, in our lesson this week, do you know that God believes in young people? Absolutely, he does. And so, we're gonna take our Bibles and turn with me to Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through 41. And that's where our, our lesson is coming from this week. Have you ever heard of John Mark? He was a young man who accompanied Paul and Barnabas on some of their missionary travels. Do you know what the word missionary means? If you were with us for the past few months, we did talk about that, it's in your vocab list. So when we talk about missionary, it means, or these missionary travels that they were doing, these were when those who are believers in Christ go all over the world talking to others about Jesus. They are the ones who are spreading the gospel. So these missionary trips are those trips where we go all over the world. We travel through city and city telling others about Jesus, right? We are spreading the gospel. So that was what Paul and Barnabas were doing. John Mark had a problem though. He found himself in the middle of an argument between two great men. So let's dive into our story today. God believes in young people. I hope you have your Bibles with you. I hope you're sitting there comfy. You are at Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through to 41. And we are talking, we're going to be introduced to a new character who is John Mark, right? That's what we were talking about. That he found himself in the middle of an argument between these two men. Let's see what the story unfolds. Now, if you turn to verse 36, let us read it together. We'll be reading. It says, after some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the brothers and sisters, the believers in every city where we preach the message of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas wanted to take his cousin John, who was called Mark, along with him. But Paul kept insisting that they should not take along with them the one who had quit and deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them to the work. Let's continue to verse 39. It says, And it became such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another. And Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas, who was again in Antioch, and set out on his second journey, commended by the brothers to the grace and favor of the Lord. And our final verse says, and he traveled through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Oh, indeed. What a story, right? We see here John Mark was caught in the middle. Paul is saying, I am not taking him with me because he deserted us. He had quit. How do you feel when people bring up those things in your past to try and discredit you? 
Hmm. Something to think about, right? Absolutely. Now, Paul was bringing up his past. He was bringing up that mistake that he made, that he had deserted the faith. He had run away. And so Paul is saying, oh, I'm not taking him with me because he, is, he has deserted us before. I don't know if he's going to do it again. But what did Barnabas do? Barnabas took him under his wings and he took him with him because he understood that he was young in the faith and needed to be mentored. That means he, he needed more training. He needed more help to be grounded in the word. And you imagine, that is just how God is with us. We may have started off loving him, praising him, doing good. We're going to church. We're reading our word. We're praying. We're on our children's choir. And then life takes a sudden turn and we find ourselves drifting away from him. And we probably desert him like John Mark did. But what does God do? He doesn't say, oh, you have too many sins that you ran away and you left me. And I don't want to have anything to do with you. He doesn't do that. We serve a God who is so loving to us that he is ready, ready to forgive us. He wants us to come back to him. And so I hope that you were able to enjoy this lesson. I hope that you could see that even though we may fall short, even though we may make mistakes, even though we may turn our backs on God, that he is not going to say, I don't ever want to see you again. He is going to keep calling you back so that you can come back into relationship with him. And even as our story continued, we saw that Paul, if you would um, get some time this week, you can take a look at 1 Timothy. Right? And you will see in chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Let no one despite, despise your youth. Right? Even as a young person, you are able to still be an example to others. Even as a young person, you are able to teach others the way to Christ. You are able to teach them how to read the word, how to be good listeners. Remember we talked about having ears and not being able to hear. You are able to be a mentor to someone. You can help someone along the way. We're on this journey together. And even later on in the story, we see that Paul recognized that he didn't have to take, that John Mark was worth taking into the ministry, that he needed more help. He didn't need to be shunned. He didn't need people to turn their backs on him, but he needed continued support, right, in order to grow. And we see in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 11, it says, only Luke is with me. That was Paul talking. He says, take Mark and bring him with you, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. So this is a lesson to us that even though we fall, even though we make mistakes, even though we've done wrong, we can still be a prophet to God's ministry, that we are useful, that we are helpful to God's body, even when we make mistakes. So if you are there listening and watching, and if you say you don't know this God that we're talking about who is ready to love us, ready to invite us into his arms, right where you are, you are able to learn about this God. You can invite him into your hearts, into your home, into your life, just by saying this simple prayer that we will be praying aloud. I want you to say it out loud into the atmosphere. You don't even have to shout. Just by your whisper, God hears. And he knows our heart's desire. He knows what we mean from our heart, if we're being true or not. So right where you are, you can just repent of all your ways. Asking him for his forgiveness, for falling away, for turning your back on him, for deserting him, for not praying, for not reading as you ought to, for not even listening to his words as you should. And he is able to forgive us. Are we ready to pray? Ever faithful and loving Father in heaven, the one who teaches us the way to go. We bless your name, and we thank you for calling us 
to have fellowship with you despite our age. We love you, Lord. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you that even when we fall short, you are there. Allow us to see clearly the plans that you have for our lives. When situations try to pull us away from you, please help us to choose you. We pray that your Holy Spirit empower all the youths around the world so that we can be dedicated to you and your plan for our lives. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Just by simply saying that prayer, we have asked God to forgive us of our wrongs. We are inviting him into our hearts and into our lives because we need his direction, we need his guidance, and we need to be mentored. We need to continue to learn how to grow in God, how to understand him, how to hear his voice. And so we have mentors all around us. It could be someone from our family, even our parents. It could be our church pastor. It could be someone close to us as a friend who is helping us to lead and guide us so that we can make the right decisions. And so this week, I want you to reflect. Think of one person who loves you and believes in you. How does that person's faith in you make you feel? I want you to show how much you care by sending a note or a card to them to show them just how much you appreciate them. And if you want to think of one person in whom you have faith, even though others do not have faith in them, just like how you know, Paul was doubting John Mark, if there is someone that you have faith in that others don't, how can you show that person that you believe in them? I want you to ponder on that this week. Think about it, reflect, and see how you can go about to show that person that you believe in them, that you have faith in them, that you're not gonna use their mistakes against them, that you're not gonna judge them because they did wrong in the past, but you're gonna treat them that they deserve to be treated with love, that they deserve to have another chance, just like God keeps giving us chance after chance after chance, right? He doesn't throw us away and say, we don't, I don't want to hear from you anymore. And so we ought to do the same with others around us, that we're not discarding people or rejecting people, that we're giving them chance after chance, even when they make mistakes, even when they hurt us. We still need to give them a chance, right? Just when we hurt God, he still gives us chance after chance. So. I do want to hear from you. I do want to hear your thoughts. I do want to hear if you've sent notes to your friends, if you, you know, sent a word of encouragement to someone, share with us so that we can hear. And the information is on your screen. You could send it to info at ctacma.org. Now, for next week, we will be talking about preparing for the good fight. And we will be looking at Ephesians 6, 10 through 8, 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 through 12, as well as verses 18 through 20. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you were able to get something from it, to understand that we all need mentoring, even when we make mistakes. And we too have to do the same to others who have fallen by the wayside, who have maybe turned their backs on God, that they too need a chance, that they need to be mentored and to be trained, and they need to learn how to love God, what to do, how to pray, how to listen to him with our hearts. We all need a little training sometimes. And so I hope this was a good lesson for you. And I hope to see you next week. Remember this week to reflect on your homework. And I hope to see you next week. Have a wonderfully blessed week.